Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. My name is Wade Nomura and we have a pretty special show today for you. We will be featuring the Rotary Club of Santa Barbara and with us today we have Katarina Zamatina, correct? Yes. And uh, Bill Dutton, both from the uh, Rotary Club of Santa Barbara. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do there, Katarina? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Katarina and currently I am on the uh, board of directors uh, of our club. I was very fortunate to be a uh, president during 2014-2015 year and uh, very privileged to be a Rotarian for the last 12 years. 12 years, wow. Mm -hmm. Long time. How about you, Bill? Well, it mine's even longer time. Uh, I've been a Rotarian since 1978 wow. uh, within the Glendale Club and then came to Santa Barbara a little bit later in 1996. Well, sorry, you there, Bill. What got you involved with Rotary? What kind of attracted you to it? Uh, it was actually an, uh, another person who was a longtime Rotarian in the Glendale area, and he was active with the Red Cross where I was. Uh, I was the executive director and just came into town, and he said, you've got to join Rotary. And I said, well, why do I need to join Rotary? He said, because those are the people that do things in this town. They need to know, they need to know you. You need to know them. And, uh, and once I got involved, boy, it was been terrific. And so when I came to Santa Barbara in 96, I knew I had to join. Okay, so. and the club Santa Barbara jumped right out at you? You knew right away that was a good fit? Yes, plus I had another board member who was with the <laughs> Santa Barbara club who said, you're going to be joining our club, aren't you? And I said, oh, of course. Very good. <laughs> yes. And how about you, Katrina? Well, um, I was uh, able to join the Rotary Club and the biggest inspiration for me was my mother. Mm. I'm originally from Siberia, Russia, and my mother was one of the charter members of the local club there. Wow. So when she came to visit me in Santa Barbara, uh, it was already the end of the week and she says, Katya, I need to make up a meeting at the Rotary. <laughs> and at that time I had no idea what Rotary was and I googled and it was uh, by pure accident, it was uh, the oldest uh, club in the area and it was Friday meeting. So I went together with my mother to help the translation and shortly after that she said, you absolutely should join this club. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, great. So where do you meet at, by the way, and when? Uh, we meet at the Fest Parker on Fridays at noon. And the size of your club? Uh, right now it's a little over 100 members. Wow, it's a good sized club then. Very good. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think uh, the impacts overall have been for your club in the community? In other words, what do you see the best fit that your club has been able to service your the community with? Well, I think with a variety of projects that we do, um, as Katarina mentioned, we're the oldest club in this area and we're the oldest club between San Francisco and Los Angeles starting in 1918. And so we've had to adapt to conditions of what was happening in our area at those various times. So we've been through the end of World War II to the Depression to current day. So, so it changes with the needs. Wow. Uh, and certainly our community projects uh, do change with that. So uh, we keep some for many years and others we adapt to, to changes that might be coming about. Looking at the, the notes I have here, it says that you guys were actually chartered uh, January 1st, 1918. Yes. Any, any reason why it would be on New Year's Day? Have, have you heard the story of that? Uh, I actually have not heard the story, <laughs> but it was not the, the, apparently the early people that liked to be Rotarian started around 1915, 1916, uh, and were denied by Rotary International, thinking that Santa Barbara was too small <laughs> a town, it needed to be, get bigger and so forth. So they really tried for a number of years and in 1917 got it all established and got the number of people that they needed and got I think it. they just wanted to start right away. What they did the do is want to start that. Um, what I've understand and heard is that uh, the reason it was January 1st, that was the first day of the new leadership of Rotary for that year. Mm -hmm. And they were the ones that were going to accept you in. Again, Santa Barbara was considered too small to support a Rotary club mm -hmm. <laughs> back in the days. And another interesting part about uh, our club's history is that it was uh, visited by Paul Harris. Uh, a few times, so yeah. that's a, a great uh, yeah, detail there as well. For the audience, Paul Harris is the uh, founding father, right, of uh, Rotary. Right. And that was in 1905? Mm -hmm. exactly. very, very good. That's so right. you definitely have roots going way back. Um, what do you see as far as traditions? Do you, have you seen anything that kind of dates you back to the 1918 time when you actually chartered? Are there any traditions from the club that you've kind of noticed unusually? Well, certainly not back to 1918. <laughs> I, I wasn't around at that time. Uh, but I, I think the tradition is of doing community service. Do as much as you can in the community. Get involved. 
get to know your fellow club members, Rotarians. Uh, fellowship is a, is a major factor in our club. And so we not only meet for our, our weekly Friday meeting, but we also have meetings in the evening and meet at restaurants in addition to that, at least once a week. So mm -hmm. there's like socials, things like yeah, that. Yeah, social, that's oh, social. Great. Yeah. Very good. Um, as far as members you have, um, question would be, how many influential people have you had? People that have been very, very much involved with the community that have been members of your club. Uh, many. many. Uh, you know, even even now, I'm sure you have a few. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, the uh, superintendent of schools, Brian Sarvis, is a wonderful member. Uh, Jim Armstrong, the city uh, for administrator, now retired. Uh, there is a number of very um, inspiring leaders in the community. And we're very fortunate to work together with uh, some of the uh, organizations, nonprofit organizations that they might represent, such as, for example, C International. And um, we have others where we are working with them through our foundation. Okay. Good. Yeah. C International, tell us a little bit about that. What is C International? Uh, C International is Surgical Eye Expeditions International, and that was started by Dr. Harry Brown, who happens to be a member of our club, but, <laughs> but that's incidental. And it's been over 40 years, and they do eye surgeries around the world mm. uh, to in developing countries, uh, free of charge to those individuals that need it. Uh, many of them are blind, particularly cataract surgeries. <coughs> there are millions of people in this world that have cataracts that cannot see. And uh, if they do not have the funds to do it, C International comes in to support their efforts with volunteer surgeons who will donate their time and go in. And it's all coordinated here in Santa Barbara, uh, and it goes into over 40 countries, usually uh, worldwide, uh, each year, and over uh, 12,000 surgeries. Now, you understand, um Upon retiring from the Red Cross, you got pulled in by C International, didn't you? To yes, I got to do an uh, extra little interim executive director <laughs> at C International, wow. which was wonderful, and I, I really enjoyed doing that. And it was based on my Rotary experience, by the way, hmm. is I had been on two C International trips through Rotary uh, into Mexico. Ah. So. so now, what would the Rotarian volunteers be doing um, in these expeditions? Uh, during the expedition, what you do is you bring down a lot of the supplies for the doctors to use. And so your luggage is, is pretty big. And so you're lugging all these things through the airport and you bring those down. And then once you get to the selected site, you, know, you can help out. If you speak Spanish, you can help out in the registration area. Um, or you can assist in any way that they might need in the setup. Uh, you're certainly welcome to go into the surgeries. And so I was able to see many of the surgeries. Um, and uh, it was a wonderful experience. Do you have and, to be and you meet with the Rotarians that are down there? They're your hosts right. as you're as you're there. Now, do you have to be trained anything like that um, medically, or do they train you on site for no, the needs? They, it's on site. Okay. okay. So it's a, uh, the lay public can go to this. So if anybody out there wanted to volunteer to help out with one of these, they could sign up for those. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Without the without experience, prior experience. Correct. Wow, yes. Very good. Now, what's the average team um, size and how many surgeries do you actually do on one of these There trips? will be between, in terms of Rotarians going down, it'll probably be four to eight, something in okay. that, uh, that range. Um, and um, surgeries, usually between 50 and 100. Wow. If it's over a certain, uh, usually it's over a weekend period. Now, are the doctors um, from the host area, or they, do they actually come in from the United States? The program is for them to be a combination of the two, okay. from that host country, because they are the host, and we only come in, uh, C International only comes in if it's uh, invited. Okay. And so it's a combination of the local eye surgeons as well as ones around the, the United States or around the world. So there's some in Europe that volunteer their times as well. Great. And volunteers then would not have to necessarily come from the Santa Barbara area. They can come from anywhere in the States. Yes, they'd anywhere. have to get directly with C International and talk with them about that. Okay. But yes. Okay. Uh -huh. But then you coordinate most of those, I understand. Yeah. yeah. The, the, through the, C International. Through, through C International. Yes. Okay. Oh, great. And there are a lot of rotary groups that do participate. I understand that. Yeah. And you said you've gone to two or three? I went to La Paz, Mexico and Celaya, Mexico. Oh, okay. Uh, how about you, Katrina? Have you gone on any of those trips yet? I haven't gone uh, to the, uh, any of the trips through C International and Rotary, but I also um, I had an experience of going to Nicaragua. Oh. And that was uh, a joint effort uh, between our club and uh, Rotary Sunrise Club. Okay. 
And it was a couple of years ago where we went to uh, uh, a small, uh, two small villages uh, not far from Managua, where we worked on the restoration of health clinics. And that was a great example of how uh, local Rotary clubs could work together. And I really enjoyed the partnership with the Sunrise. It was great fun. And it was also a little bit of experience of being in the medical field and helping out. Uh, I was an assistant to one of the physicians that accompanied uh, us and uh, we were able to see over 35 patients a day and I was assisting her and uh, it was wonderful. <laughs> it's such a humbling experience and it's so great to be able to do something hands-on. So actually I didn't ask you, what, what do you do? What is your vocation, your career? I'm a healthcare administrator oh, okay. for the elderly care facilities. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. And you, Bill? Uh, now retired, uh, former executive director of the American Red Cross here in Santa Barbara County. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. And um, through the Red Cross, were you also involved with that and Rotary also at the same time? Yes, has there been oh, ties definitely. With that? Yes, yeah, yeah. And we do many things together from time Perfect. to time. Well, we um, have some pictures that I, I guess you furnished us. Uh, maybe we can go over a few of those, uh, starting with the first one here. I've got a picture of a, uh, looks like a young, uh, young professional group. You yes, tell us a little bit about uh, that's that? from Rotaract. And uh, recently, we, they support our efforts, we support their club efforts. This one happened to be a recent one where they did a fundraising uh, campaign where they were trying to raise funds at, as miniature golf at, <laughs> at the uh, Santa Barbara Courthouse. And uh, our club helped participate and do that. And also, they have participated with us where just last year, uh, beginning part of this year, I should say, they uh, assisted us on our blood drive. Uh -huh. And they did a lot of recruitment for us and came out and donated and so forth. So, so a lot of cooperative efforts between yes. the two groups. Yes. By the way, uh, Rural Act is scheduled to be one of our shows, upcoming shows. Oh, so wonderful. Uh, that would be Great. a good, good one to hear about. Um, the next picture we have is a picture that looks like uh, trash collectors. You guys are doing your hands-on <laughs> duty here for the community. Uh, anybody want to cover that one? Uh, yes, we are trash collectors. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this one ha happened to be outside the Boys and Girls Club, but it was at Bonette Park which is an ongoing project that we do at Bonnet Park on the west side, uh, at least once or twice a year where we do clean up uh, of that area. Uh, was also, one of our particular reasons for doing that is Bonnet um, was a former Rotarian and president of our Rotary Club in 1945, wow. 46, I believe it was, and an ex-mayor of Santa Barbara. Right. Right. And uh, we've also provided uh, playground equipment and so forth for them. Oh, very good. Um, another picture I have here shows a gentleman, uh, looks like he's giving blood. Yes, <laughs> that happens to be Aaron Speckler, one Aaron of our Speckler. longtime club members. Right. And uh, this will be our eighth year that we've participated in doing a blood mobile. Usually we do it in the uh, winter or springtime. Around that time, we'll be doing it again next year. And uh, it's wonderful because it helps save lives. Right. And right. we're very supportive of that. Uh, and then the following one, there's another picture here showing, uh, looks like a group uh, doing a little Christmas shopping. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, that is the picture of our annual Christmas shopping for foster children. Oh. Uh, foster children is one of the programs that we are very passionate uh, in our club and we are really focused on helping foster children. Uh, this program has been started a little over 10 years ago by one of our club members, Robin Ashler, and uh, it has really sustained and flourished since then. Uh, it is also uh, one of uh, the uh, grants that we give out through our foundation. And so this picture shows uh, some of the uh, uh, gifts that we are given to the uh, foster children during Christmas season. So we could drop names on this one. That looks like Randy. Randy Fagan, exactly. past president, correct? Yes. Randy and his daughter. <laughs> and his daughter. Yes. Now, how does the program actually work? Um, tell us a little bit about that. Um, is it a shopping spree? Is it money that uh, you give to somebody in need or do you actually do the no, shopping? No, we, we have a certain budget that we work with. Okay. And, but what we do work with ahead of time is to have the desires of the teenagers known to us. So we get a, she a sheet of paper that says a little bit about them, a little background, what's their favorite color, what's their favorite whatever, and uh, what would they like for Christmas. And then we try and work that in our budget that we do have. I see. Uh, so you have two baskets here. Is that for multiple then? Uh, multiple foster children. Mm -hmm. uh, and also important part about uh, this particular program is to mention how it is evolving now. Because uh, at this point, we're transitioning to helping foster children 
after they turn 18. So we work with Santa Barbara City College on scholarship to give specifically to be given out to former foster children to gain their uh, two-year college degrees that where they can apply their skills, whether it's maybe carpentry, maybe nursing, uh, anything that they will be interested in. So that's kind of an evolution of the foster children I program. See. I see. Very good. And the items that you purchase, where do they, they come from or where do you buy them from? Well, we buy them at Kmart. And at Kmart's Kmart. been wonderful. They've given okay. us a discount each year. So they're and kind of so a cooperating partner. Oh, with very with much the, so. Program. Yeah, oh, Kmart's excellent. been wonderful. Oh, very yeah. good. Um, we have then a few pictures here. One picture showing um, a young lady receiving an honorary plaque. Mm -hmm. You want to tell yes. us about that one? Well, that's actually our teacher recognition program. Okay. And uh, teachers are wonderful in the Santa Barbara area, and we want to thank them as much as we can. And uh, what we do is quarterly, we honor at least one teacher. And usually that teacher brings the principal and anyone else, the husband, wife, what, whatever, the spouse along. And so we recognize them. So they do get a plaque mm -hmm. that's, that uh, recognizes them as an outstanding teacher in our community. We also give them $1,000 that they can use in their school for whatever they would like to do. And, and so we do that quarterly as the teacher recognition program. And um, how are they selected? They are selected th through the school district. So they, uh, and then we look at their recommendation and if it appears to be uh, in line with what we'd like, we say fine, we would like to recognize them and bring them to one of our Rotary meetings. Great. And I noticed the next picture following also has another, um, looks like a young lady who's a, a teacher also, I believe, mm -hmm. and picture there of Brian. Now, we could drop names, like I said, <laughs> welcome to, and I guess he's probably fairly instrumental also Absolutely. with the program. Uh, another picture here showing a contribution of $5,000 to Children's Library. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this is uh, the, uh, one of our grant recipients. Uh, one thing that I should mention is the important role that uh, Rotary Club Foundation plays in giving out grants. So this is our way of uh, staying involved in the community and we receive multiple grant applications that the, uh, our foundation reviews. And so this uh, particular uh, grant was $5,000 that was given to the restoration of the children's uh, library section in our main library. And in addition to that, um, uh, we, uh, in general, give out on average about 20,000 uh, grants per year. Uh, $20,000. $20,000 wow. mm -hmm. wow. uh, per year uh, for those uh, different um, uh, nonprofits. And uh, several of them include uh, organizations such as United uh, Boys and Girls Club. Uh, we have Friendship uh, Adult Daycare Center, uh, the uh, Dos Pueblos Engineering Academy, and many others. So Very good. So Sounds like there's uh, quite a bit of focus on education as far as uh, yes. contributions and, and the foundation and getting. And youth as well. And youth. And youth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you said there's an adult one there also. So yeah, oh, it, it, mm -hmm. it, it is could be adult. the board. Yes. Mm -hmm. We good. also give them the C International that we talked about earlier. Right. So right. It, it varies, uh, but mm -hmm. it tends to be more of a youth focus. Okay. And since 1987, we have given out over $1.7 million right? to this community as a wow. result. Wow, wow. Yeah. And is that through the foundation? Through the foundation, foundation directly. Mm -hmm. Wow. Exactly. Outstanding. Good for you guys. Okay, I have a picture here of a, looks like a, a plaque, a memorial plaque there. You want to tell us a little bit about that one? Well, that one was something similar that we talked about a little bit earlier, uh, was in a loving memory of a particular person uh, who was a Rotarian in our area, but it was really at, uh, uh, at uh, Bonnet Park that we talked about uh, as well. And so there's a rotary plaque that kind of thanks us for being there, and we provided playground equipment for them uh, during uh, several years ago to, uh, to do that. So it's, it's a great program. Okay, great. Um, and is that can kind of a continuing project? Or yes, that one we do every year, um, so and we look for the needs of Bonnet Park. Okay. Uh, and I, as I mentioned earlier, we do a cleanup at least once or twice a year. And you also uh, understand do capital improvements, for example, the playground, things like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, good. Um, does the foundation, your foundation, actually have an endowment for the playground structures, things like that? Um, no, we don't. Not, not for that one. Okay. Um, city takes charge then, I would guess, with some yeah, of the... Yeah, we work very closely with the city. And uh, I think United Way also. Yes. Oh, uh, Paul Didier is instrumental in uh, this whole process as well. Very good. It sounds like you have quite a few ties here to the community. <laughs> <laughs> very big players. Good for you guys. Uh, the next picture shows uh, volunteers check-in for the Rotary Rose Parade float. 
Yeah. Um, is that an annual thing that you guys do, uh, working with that? Well, a as we mentioned earlier, we do a lot with other clubs. And you should know this one more than anything, <laughs> anyone else, because Wade has been heavily involved in the Rose Parade float for Rotary. And each year there is an opportunity for the Rotary clubs in the Santa Barbara, Carpinteria, Goleta area to go down to, um, to the Rose Parade and work on the Rose Parade float that Rotary will have. And these are just a few pictures that we did last, I believe it was last year, mm -hmm. to, um, to get involved. And so a number of our members went down and they were given t-shirts. And I think, Wade, you were involved with getting those we, in some we, way. We, were, we had a lot of those donated too. Right? Yeah, so that, that was great. That so was we really one. enjoyed going down. It's a fun yeah. evening. It's sometimes really cold, but because uh, <laughs> you work in... Uh, in certain areas, but it's uh, but it's wonderful. Yeah, and, and we enjoy it. And the bus ride up and down is, is great. Um, about forty people go in that bus, right? That's right. Correct each year. That's, that's, that's right. outstanding. And so I the see, clubs throughout the whole South Coast go. I see a picture here of uh, one of the groups that went down, and a picture of you with. Uh, let's drop his name, Steve Peterson. He's mm -hmm. gonna like that one. That's right. Another past president. Another mm -hmm. past president. Of um, club. You guys yeah. uh, showing some flowers. You guys getting ready to set those into place. We were. We were. Now, what do you think about the? Uh, I've heard stories that it's pretty tedious as far as putting those floats together. Oh, How, they, your take they are. That? My first year that I went, it was putting <laughs> seeds on, not flowers. Flowers are big. <laughs> seeds are like small, and My you're gosh. you know, and you and you've got generally glue all over your hands. <laughs> and, yeah. So they must have known you were a past president to give you that. Oh job. yeah, I got yeah the pr <laughs> premier pretty job. Pretty special. Yes. <laughs> How about you, Katrina? Have you gone down yet? No, I haven't had a chance oh, to do it. We'll have to get you down there. It's, it's, been, a, oh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. A um, few pictures now we have uh, showing some of the international efforts you have. You talked about Sea International, but I see a picture here with uh, an ambulance in the background. Yes. Uh, one of our, uh, this one happened to be for Ezequiel Montes, Mexico. And a group of us went down to Ezequiel Montes, uh, gosh, how many years ago? Seven years ago, I believe it mm -hmm. was. And as we were down there, and we met with the Rotary Club while we were there, we wanted to find out what their needs were. So we were exploring what were the needs first before we started anything. And we discovered that in a, in a town or city of around 50,000 that they served, they only had one ambulance. And the number one project they would like us to work on was an ambulance. So we came back to the club, and there were, I believe, six of us that went down on that uh, that expedition to see what uh, what the needs were, and we came back and and lo and behold, one of our members knew somebody that ha that was president of an ambulance company, because we thought we'd be doing a big fundraising effort and all this kind of. As it turned out, uh, it was another Rotarian in another club <laughs> who said, "Sure, I'll be happy to donate a an older but but still usable ambulance." And so we did, and we eventually got it down to Ezequiel Montez and uh, became their second ambulance that they had. Wow. And uh, they put a rotary uh, emblem on the side of the ambulance, which was very nice of them to do. I see a gentleman here with a, a hat on. It looks like uh, Wolf. That Wolf was Wolf. Stuhlenberg. Yes, past district governor. Of Mexico. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and Wolf uh, comes to Santa Barbara quite often. He, he, he likes it here. He so, does, he does. That's where we first met him, so, yeah. It's very interesting speaking to him. His, his English has a pretty strong German, German accent, accent. Yeah. as does his Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> so he's a very unique man, but he did serve as a governor for us, and uh, we actually are taking him down Jaws of Life for this next project. Oh, is and, that right? Yeah, and we're looking at another ambulance. Last picture looks like we have here is a picture of, uh, looks like helping somebody in an international country of some place. Yes, that happened to be our trip uh, that we took earlier in the year to Guatemala. Okay. And one of our international projects is to work with a nonprofit in Guatemala called Mayan Families. And they're an outstanding uh, organization. And when I was first doing research on them, I found out kind of all the good things they were doing. They have seven preschools that they run. Uh, they have scholarships for st 3,000 students from preschool through university that they provide for. They provide housing. They provide senior programs. Uh, one of the projects that we were involved in, which the picture shows, is stoves. What they have is many of the Mayan families when we, that we discovered when we went down there still cook on the floor. On, uh, generally, it's, a, it's uh, on dirt floor, and um, if they're lucky, they'll, they'll bring in about $4 a day. And part of that is to buy wood to cook their food on. 
putting this stove in, which, uh, which our Rotary Club helped purchase, um, saves them about 70% less wood. The key factor to it is there's, they also vent the smoke out. In the past, the smoke was kept in the room. So there were a lot of respiratory problems and so forth. The kids weren't going to school, a lot of other things. So, so we vent that out. And so we've done a number of those and we go into each individual home and, and, and do that. Very good. As far as community, uh, local community, what do you feel, your opinion, of the best project you do, the best benefit you give to the community right now as far as projects through your club? Oh, um, Katarina mentioned about the foster children program. I think that's a key, that's key a program one. for this area, particularly for the teenagers. Mm -hmm. There are other groups that do support and, and do support uh, foster children. Uh, our club decided to concentrate on teenagers because they seem to be the ones that were left out. Got it. And, and I understand that program also includes going into college level, right? You, you support yes. mm -hmm. first year college, something like mm -hmm. that as part of the, the foundation it's, it's, it's through the, the vocational program. And I think to add on this is also our foundation is the key to stay connected with the community, to work with various nonprofits, to work with different organizations to establish that connection and to help uh, with their needs. Have you ever counted how many uh, area organizations you work with within oh. the Santa Barbara area? You ever oh, Since 1918, there must have been an awful lot. <laughs> it's been a must lot. have been most of them, I would think, by this point. I don't know, and but, but uh, the other one I should mention is Meals on Wheels. We've been mm -hmm. very actively involved with oh, that yes. as well. Oh, okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody, uh, thank you very much for your time. I sure appreciated getting yeah. all this information. Uh, you're the largest yeah. club also in the area, Santa, greater Santa Barbara area, and I believe there's seven other clubs here. So. Congratulations to you. Have you taken mentorship as far as leading <laughs> through and helping them out? Uh, I think over the years, yes. Good. Yes, that Very has good. happened. Well, for those of you that are interested, uh, Santa Barbara Club meets at the Fest Parker every Friday at noontime. You're welcome to come and visit them. Uh, I'll put the Certainly. invitation out on your behalf. I hope that's okay. Absolutely. That's okay. <laughs> of course. And uh, if you're interested, please stop by. See what they're doing. They're doing some pretty outstanding things, not only in the community, but worldwide. Thank you for your time, and we will see you later.